Microsoft 365 Excel, March 16th, 2022. 14 new beta functions to blow your mind. Now here's the list of new functions. And I've already done a few videos on the amazing VStack and HStack. But we're going to look at each one in this video. Let's go over to the sheet text. Now the first function we'll look at is text split. And this function is like text to columns, but in a worksheet formula. We're going to say, hey, I want you to split that comma. And we want to split across the columns. So in column delimiter, we put a space. Close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, no problem. It's like we're using text to columns, but with a function. And it gets better because it's sort of like Power Query, too. I'm going to say I want you to split, comma, and we're going to skip over this argument. Row delimiter, if I put the space there, it splits down the rows. Now it's going to get doubly better because guess what? This cell has two records. Comma means go over a column. Semicolon means a row, comma. So for column, we put a comma. For row delimiter, we put a semicolon. And when I close parentheses and hit Enter, it's going to spill a table of records. Now, whereas here we put in multiple delimiters to split some by column and some by rows, here we have multiple delimiters but we want to split everything into the columns. So comma, in the column delimiter, we have to use array syntax, open curly bracket, and then whatever our delimiters are in double quotes have to be separated by a comma. So that means we have, close curly bracket, two delimiters. Close, and when I hit Enter, the item split into the columns. Here, I want to split these numbers by the delimiter space, so I'll simply Enter the formula, but uh-oh, there's an empty cell. And I bet you it comes from an extra space, F2. Now, I could put trim around that cell reference to remove extra spaces, but why not comma, comma, use the fourth argument, ignore empty cells, either true or 1. Now, when I enter, I get just the four numbers. Now, to appreciate just how awesome this function is, it always pays to look at the old school methods. How do we do this before? And that's how we split into the cells. We used filter XML. Now let's look at text before. And I'm going to look at all of these items so we can spill the results. And I want to get everything before the space, comma. So the delimiter will be a space. When I hit Enter, <laughs> that's amazing. Because here is the old school method. Here's another great function, text after. We want to get everything after the function space. So I'll highlight everything, comma, and the delimiter will be in double quotes, function space, and double quotes, close parentheses, and the result spill. But uh-oh, there's a capital F. The rest are lowercase. So by default, it considers case. But F2, let's look at the last argument, comma, comma. The default is case sensitive. Case insensitive is true or 1. So I'll put a 1, close parentheses, and that solves the problem. Here's the old school method. Now here's another cool thing about these new functions. Text after considers case. So does text before. The only other two functions that I know of that are case sensitive uh, is find, which is like search. It returns the starting position of a text string. But it's case sensitive. And exact. That checks whether two text strings are exactly the same. And it's case sensitive. All right, now let's go look at four more new amazing functions. Now we want to look at to call. And here's the goal. I want quiz 1, 2, and 3. I want all those scores in a single column. Two call comes to the rescue. And if we just use the first argument array, by default, when I hit Enter, first off, that's amazing. It took all those numbers, and now they're in a column. But it went row by row by default, 2, 10, 9. 
9, 10, 4, if that's not what you want. And in fact, you really just want to stack these columns one on top of the other, F2. I don't got to use H stack. I'm going to type a comma and we'll momentarily be amazed by this argument. We can ignore blanks, errors, or both. We don't need to ignore anything, comma. And there it is, scan by column, either true or one. And here's our formula to stack up the three quiz columns, one on top of the other. So now we get this column right at the top. Now how do we used to do this? Here's the old school index. And then we just created an incrementing number to get the row and an incrementing number to get a column. This is unwinding a table into a single column. Now we use two call. We can also use two row. Here I just said two row, and it put it into a row. All right, choose columns is another amazing function. Now we have three chooses. I'm choosing the second one. I put in the array. And the conventional way, comma, is simply to put the different column numbers. So really what I want is I want quiz one, two, and three. So separated by commas, two, three, six. Now this will just deliver them side by side. But what if the quiz moves? Uh-oh, now we're getting some tests. So Control-Z, we can make this dynamic. And we'll only have to use column number. Now what I want to do is I want to look up these quiz names and find the relative position. Anytime you're looking something up and trying to find the relative position, that's the perfect job for X match. Now we'll do a function argument array operation. Hey, find those three items, comma, within that range right there. Close parentheses. And if I click and hit F9, bam, array syntax. And guess what? In this particular choose columns, it doesn't matter whether you have semicolons, which mean row, or commas, which mean columns. It just is going to look at the numbers, Control-Z, and choose those columns. So when I hit Enter, now it is dynamic. If I move this, it is working. Now Control-Z, there is an old school method, and this is sort of funny. Filter, that's old school. Well, yeah, we could do the exact same thing, but we'd have to use one, two, three functions. The new, new school, there it is. We can do it in two functions. And the lookup value is actually the lookup values. Over here, we have to make sure and get the columns and look those up here. All right, what we really want is we want to take that result and to call. That's our goal. The values spill down the columns. Now, the order of this is 2, 10, 9. That may be fine. If it's not, we simply do what we did just a moment ago, comma, comma. I want to stack the columns up, so I'm going to scan by column, true or 1. When I hit Enter, now I went and got quiz 1 and stacked it on top of quiz 2 and so on. Now we can also use choose rows. If I have this array here, comma, and I want row 2 and 5, that function will do it no problem. All right, now we want to go to the next sheet, H stack and V stack. Now I have one, two, three sales tables, and I want to append one on top of the other. Now normally we do something like this in Power Query, but now we have vertical stack. Array one, I'm putting the full sales table, comma, array two, the second table, comma, array three, the third table. Close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, that is absolutely amazing. And guess what? If we look right here at this record, that's this record right here, if I add a new record to the bottom of this table, it's totally added exactly where it should be. That's some new power with Excel worksheet formulas that we have not had before, at least not with such ease. All right, let's scroll over and look at another example. Now, I've already done a few videos on VStack and HStack about how to create single cell reports. 
Now this report comes from this data set. And the essence of it is there's two columns, that formula and this one. I already have these loaded in the clipboard. And what we want to do is use vertical stack to stack up the first row, the middle part of the report, and the bottom row. But inside vStack, we're going to use hStack to stack up two different columns side by side. So over here, we'll use vertical stack, the first array. Those are the field names. You could also have the names off to the side, comma. Array 2, this is the middle part of the report. So here's where I use horizontal stack. That's the first column. And you can see that's an array, comma. That formula will create the second column. Close parentheses. That is all sitting in vStack second argument. Close parentheses. And if I hit Enter now, that is totally cool. We stacked up report column headers and the inside of the report, F2, comma. And in array 3, we're going to use horizontal stack. And for the first array, I'm simply going to type the word total in double quotes and then comma, array 2. This is where I need the grand total, so I sum of the whole sales column. Close parentheses, close parentheses, and right there, that's the total row, that's the inside of the report, and that's the top row. Come to the end, close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, that is totally amazing. And it's totally dynamic. You could add new data, and it will update. All right, you would think we've seen enough amazing things, but we got to go look at wrap. Now, wrap columns is like the opposite of two columns. Two columns takes a rectangular range and throws it into a column. But here, we're going to take this column and wind it up into multiple columns. So there's the vector, comma, the wrap count. That's how many you count down until you go to a new column. So I'm going to put 5. And when I hit Enter, it took that one column, and now there's three. Now, because I know that this column is sorted, and for each quiz, these are sorted also alphabetically, I can create a cross-tab report. But the intersecting value is not going to be an aggregate calculation. It's going to be a two-way lookup. So I'm going to do transpose unique for all these quizzes, close, close. And that's exactly what we want, because the first five here are quiz one. The next five, quiz two. Now I simply use unique on the names. And there I have my cross tab, where we're looking up June quiz two, there's a four. June quiz two, there it is. Now if I sort this column, it'll wreck everything. But you can see that if we weren't doing the column header and row headers, this still wraps the columns where each column has five rows. Control Z. Down here, I know that we have this column. This is the major sort. This is the minor sort. But here, I'm going to use wrap rows. And here, since I want quiz as the column headers, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, comma, for wrap count, I want to go to the next row every three items. So when I hit Enter, 9, 10, 4, there it is. Then I go down to the next row. I'll get my unique list of transposed quizzes and the unique list of names. And there it is, June quiz 2, 4. By the way, if I put a 6 here, there's not quite enough items, so those NAs. That's where you could put a pad. I'm going to put double quote, double quote. Control Z, Z. Now here's the old school method. Good old index, rows, and columns. Now let's go over to the last sheet, expand, drop, take. All right, now we want to look at drop and take. These are new functions where drop is like remove rows in Power Query, and take is like keep rows. Now here's our table. And our goal is to drop rows from the top of the bottom or columns from the left or the right. Equals drop the array, that's the full table, comma. 
And for rows, we put positive numbers, which tell us how many rows from the top to drop, or negative numbers to drop rows from the bottom. We want to remove the top row, comma, and from the left, that would be a positive number, one column. When I close parentheses and Enter, I drop the first column and the first row. Now in the top cell, F2, and we're going to double drop. That's the array, comma, and now we want to come from the bottom. So we want to remove the bottom one row. So we put a negative number. If you're removing from the right a column, you'd put a negative number also. Close parentheses and Enter. Now normally in Excel, if this is really in the worksheet, right, we would just do this. But if you have an object and you need to drop, then that's the perfect function. Take equals take. Here's the full array. And from that, we want to take only the bottom row, so minus 1. Now here's the old school for that. Now the expand function. I don't really have a good use for this, so hopefully some of you will tell me what a good use is. But let's take quiz 1 to quiz 3, comma, and I want to expand this four more rows, so I'm going to put a 5. When I hit Enter, well, I get quiz 1, 2, 3 with a bunch of NAs. F2, comma, comma. Well, we could pad, which means we're going to give everyone for all three quizzes the score 7. When I hit Enter, there it is. Now I actually found one potentially good use. This is a common task where we need to take a cross tab and list in a proper data set all the quizzes. So down here, I'm going to do expand of quiz 1, 2, 3, comma 5. That will give us all the NAs. And then F2 at the very beginning, I'm going to say if NA. That's the value, comma, value of NA as an array, three columns with the quiz names. And that will fill down. So that's like the fill down feature in Power Query. Now what I really want is two column. And if I leave it like that, sometimes this is exactly what you want, one, two, three, one, two, three. But I want all the ones together. So that means I have to go comma, comma, Scan by column. That means take all the quiz ones from column one first. So I put a one for true, and there you go. That's your formula. If I paste it up here, it spills down. So I don't know. That looks pretty good. Here's the old school method. All right, in this video, we had a lot of fun with the 14 new functions. We saw expand, drop, take wrap columns and wrap rows, vstack and hstack, two columns and two rows, and even choose columns with some extra stuff here. And we started it off with text split, text before, and text after. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.